Hey, Instagram, how's it going? It's so great to be live. It's been about, it's been a bit, it's been a bit, but it's so great. I've got someone exciting that I'm excited to, I'm excited, excited about exciting. Um, I am really looking forward to inviting one of my dear friends onto this live. And I am so excited to have this conversation today. I'm really, really looking forward to it. Just making sure if he's come live already, waiting for him to join. Let's have a look. Here he is. He's, he's, he's on. All right. I love this. Two seconds. Let's see if this all goes through. Did you get that, buddy? Here we go. Mom, man. Matthew, what's up, man? What's going on, dude? It's good to see you. Oh, dude, it's so Oh, good to see you. So everyone who's watching right now, I am so excited to be live with my very, very dear friend, Matthew Hussey. If you don't know who he is, where have you been? And what I'm about to do right now is tell you about something very, very exciting that I am putting the link into the comment section right now. And I want you, oh, why, why won't you let me do that? Oh no, give me one second. Me... Glitchy, it's being glitchy. Hey Matthew, give me one, one second. All right, oh, it's... can you tell me the best link for people to grab it? Because Amazon's being weird. Yeah, it's uh, lovelifebook.com. Perfect, I'm gonna put that in. I was gonna put Amazon in, but that's even better. So everyone who's live right now, nearly 5,000 people, this is Matthew Asi's new book is out right now. It's called Love Life. I have just pinned the link to the top of my comments as you're listening to us. This is the book I want you to go and grab. I had a long two hour conversation with Matthew about the book that's going up on the podcast next week, but the book comes out tomorrow, which means if you order it today, you'll get it this week, hopefully. So love life. The book is all about how to raise your standards, find your person and live happily no matter what. Matthew, thank you for doing this, man. Thanks for jumping on. How are you feeling? Thanks for having me, man. And I'm good. I'm in New York. I just went on Gail King's show on CBS this morning, which was fun and did Oprah Daily this afternoon. So it's a whirlwind, man. But it's fun. I, it feels like a big, this is an important cultural moment to get out this book. I feel like it's a message that a lot of people are really, really going to benefit from in their love lives right now. I could agree with you more. What's, what's happening culturally right now that you think is making dating feel like the worst thing, the hardest thing, making relationships feel extremely difficult. I think when I talk to a lot of people, they're just like, oh gosh, it's just not working for me. I can't find the right person. There's, we keep hearing conversations around red flags and green flags. Like what's happening in the world of love and life that you've seen that has been the core of why this book matters so much right now? Well, I think we're so many people want love so badly, which is such a human thing. And I think we're often shamed for wanting to find love. Like it, there's something wrong with us if we want it too badly, when it's actually the most human thing in the world to want love. But we're told, you know, don't, you should be like cool, you should be relaxed. And we're all pretending like having this mm. indifference, like, oh, it's fine, I don't need it that badly. When in truth, we're all really afraid that we might not find it in our lives. And when that cult, when that internal culture of fear and anxiety that we're never gonna find what we're looking for meets an external dating culture of people taking whatever they can get and giving the minimum possible investment, that creates a potent recipe for us lowering our standards and accepting mm. less than we really deserve. So now what happens is we meet someone we like, if we're lucky enough to find someone we like, and then when we like them, when we decide we like them, we think we have to lower our standards or make ourselves as easy as possible to hold on to them because we have this scarcity mindset and what results is we lower our standards at the exact time that we need to raise our standards in order to attract someone. And then we lock ourselves into dynamics where people don't treat us well, people pick us up and put us down, uh, and we get far less than we're worth. Oh, wow, Matthew, I mean, preach. That is, that is some real stuff. I mean, it's, it's what I'm hearing and I'm seeing in the comments right now, actually. Poppy says, not lowering my standards. I love reading that. 
Uh, Lisa says, you know, this is heartbreaking, but it's true. Lisa goes, I've been single nine years, now 42, and have given up. And, and I think what's really amazing, Lisa, and I want to share this with you because Matthew sent me his book in advance, uh, and, and I read it, and, and here's the real part I want to tell you. I know people in my life who are single right now that I've recommended this book to, and they're saying it is changing their life. Like, genuinely, they're reading Love Life right now. I know people in my life that got the book of me early, that, that I recommended it to a few people. I had a couple of extra copies, thanks to Matthew. And I, and I shared it with people I know and love. And this book is transforming them. So if you're listening right now, the place I want you to go is lovelifebook.com. Uh, so you can order this book. Like I said, it's coming out tomorrow. And I don't want you to give up. I don't want you to feel like it's all over. I don't want you to feel like Matthew just said, like, oh, I have to lower my standards. I have to settle for less. Because what does that create, actually, Matthew? I want to ask you that. Like, I think we also often get two sorts of advice. Like sometimes people are like, well, look, you're not going to get everything you want, so you better be a bit more realistic. And then you're saying, I don't want you to lower your standards. What's the difference in that? And, and, and what's that balance? Well, well, what I've found is that often when people say to me, Matthew, I've got really high standards. I, and it's why people keep telling me my standards are too high in love. Often what's really the interesting is I say, well, then tell me about your love life. What's been going on? And they'll end up describing to me someone that for the last two years they've been dating on and off who won't give them a relationship, who treats them poorly, who picks them up and puts them down whenever they want. And then I say, when you say you have high standards, what do you mean exactly? Because I feel like you have really high standards for someone being physically attractive or for someone being charismatic or for someone having a, you know, a certain eligibility on paper, but no standards for the way someone's treating you. Mm. So what we have to start doing is, I believe, having smarter standards about the things that don't matter nearly as much. And I'm not saying sexual chemistry doesn't matter. I'm not saying sexual attraction doesn't matter. Of course, those things matter. But I do think that we often don't realize how many different forms they can come in. I think we have mm -hmm. our very square box of like, my partner looks like this. It, this is my type. And often the ideal partner for us doesn't come in the form we originally imagined. But I also believe that we have to start having much higher standards for the things that really do matter. Mm. Kindness, mm. loyalty, consistency, someone who wants the same things as us, someone who actually sees us and makes us feel at home, like we, we can be truly ourselves. These are the things that often we have no standards for. So I'm not advocating raising standards about things that don't matter. I'm advocating <laughs> raising standards in the areas that do matter. And the reason we don't have high standards for the way people treat us is because we need to work on our relationship with ourselves. Mm. Uh, we need to start changing how well we treat ourselves. And there's an entire chapter in this book, as you know, on core confidence, which is for anyone who has, I, I believe that we hear this message all the time about how important self-love is and that that's the key to confidence. But the truth is most people have no idea how to actually practice self-love. What does it even look like? And I think that's because our model for self-love is broken. So mm. in the truth, in the book, I, what I say is I believe self-love needs a rebrand. And I give people a completely new model for how to love themselves that is really, really counterintuitive. It doesn't need you to like convince yourself you're special or anything like that. You don't know try and think, oh, I, I do match up to everyone else, even though in your heart you don't feel like you do. Um, it's a very different and much more robust model for self-love that anyone can apply today. So that's all in the book. And it's for anyone who does pre-order, I see a bunch of you pre-ordering yeah. right now. For anyone who does, there's a chapter called Core Confidence. Even, by the way, even if you're watching this and you're in a relationship, Get the book just for that chapter, because I promise you, if you're still struggling with your self-worth at this stage in life or with beating yourself up all the time, never feeling good enough, always feeling inadequate, that chapter alone is going to change your life. I love that. I love that. Milvia says, just pre-ordered mine. Sammy says, I need this book. Uh, Angel says, uh, Jay Shetty, cannot wait to read, listen to this. I wonder if I lowered my standards. 
uh, unfold and rise says i pre-ordered two copies and cannot wait for them to arrive lisa says ordering it after this i love you guys thank you so much i love supporting my friends and matthew's been a dear friend for quite a while now and i know how much he's poured into this book with his heart his soul you'll see it from the moment you start reading the book and i i can't say how grateful i am to each and every one of you that are ordering it right now tobes has just ordered it jen as well this is so good um, amazing to see KL Green 17 just said order. Thank you so much. Matthew, I wanted to ask you this question because this is something that I've been hearing a lot lately as well. And it's, it's this idea that a lot of people and, and a reason why the way we date and why we lower our standards is because some of us have deep insecurities. And when we're on a date or before we go on one, maybe we're even avoiding dating because we're insecure of the way we look, we're insecure of the way we talk, we're insecure about how we appear to someone, we're insecure about the job we have, we're insecure about how much money we make. There's so many things I feel that people are insecure about and that makes them either lower their standards or when they go on a date, all they're thinking about in their head is, oh gosh, just don't be that person, don't let them see that, you know, we're trying to figure it out. And you talked about that core confidence piece, but how can we, revisit our insecurities how first of all how can we be aware of whether they're real or whether we're making them up in our head and and b how do we revisit that so that we can actually get out on that date we can actually start that conversation we can kind of get out of that bubble we put ourselves in man that's such a good question i look i think firstly we have this misconception that certain people are attractive because they have money because they have looks because they have all these resources in life or because they have a certain way about them the the we get insecure thinking that because i don't have those things i'll never be attractive but energy is everything you jay you i've had the privilege of knowing you at different stages of your career and you've not you didn't get to where you are and then suddenly have this amazing energy and this way about you that makes people gravitate towards you i believe you are where you are because you have that energy and that's a thing we can all take with us is every single one of us look there's a there's a great um there's a well, there's a TV show. I've never really watched it through, but I remember seeing this moment in this TV show and I saw the concept for it. You know the show Chopped, Jay? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember seeing the concept for it and immediately thinking this show maybe accidentally has stumbled upon like one of the great truths about confidence. There's a, at the beginning of the show, each chef just gets given a basket of ingredients and their job over the next 20 minutes is to do something with those ingredients. And of course, the way they make it a great show is that the ingredients are really a mixed bag, <laughs> right? There's like in the, like, the episode I watched, one of the ingredients was like Alaskan king crab and another ingredient was kelp jerky. <laughs> And I remember thinking, well, obviously every chef is happy that they got Alaskan king crab to work with, but not so happy that they have to find a way to do something with kelp jerky. <laughs> but the cool thing about the show is that the show isn't about ingredients. Mm -hmm. The show is about chefs. Mm -hmm. It's about mm -hmm. what the way they rate the chef is not on what ingredients they had opened up. The way they rate the chef is in 20 minutes time, I'm gonna see how creative you're able to be with these ingredients. Mm -hmm. and, and it's really easy to love a chef that can do something great with kelp jerky. <laughs> and so the way that I look at life is we're all chefs. Yeah. We all got different ingredients. We all got some Alaskan king crab and we all got some kelp jerky. Right? <laughs> and we think our kelp Kelp jerky is the thing that makes us unlovable, but it's not true. The, the reality is life isn't about ingredients. It's about chefs. Mm. If you want to be attractive, become a great, stop obsessing over the ingredients mm. you've got and focus on being an amazing chef with what you have. And mm. take, take some comfort in the fact that you never got a choice. It, you weren't, you didn't choose, you got, when you were born, you got a human. That human is you. You didn't choose that human. It's not like you got to go to the buffet and say, you know what, I'll do that one instead. <laughs> you just 
You just got you. You didn't have a choice in the matter. So your, in, your basket of ingredients, relax. You never <laughs> had a choice. But what you can do is become a great chef. And I believe that the, the people who, not everyone's going to fall in love with you, but the person who falls madly in love with you is, the pers- is not going to be the person who just looks at your ingredients and thinks they're great. It's going to be a person who sees an except- exceptional chef mm. and thinks that is unbelievably inspiring. Mm. So now those parts of your story that you think are like, they make you ugly, they make you unlovable, the shame, the trauma, the history, all of it, whatever it is, the way you came through that, the way that you got over that, the way you became the person you are today, that's going to be the thing that makes someone fall in love with you. It's not going to make you, it's not going to make everyone fall in love with you, but guess what? Love, finding love is not a popularity contest. It's you only need one. You don't need an army of people who think you're hot. You need one person who thinks you're the most extraordinary human being, the one that what they want to spend their life with. Oh, dude, you're just throwing, oh my gosh, right now I'm just listening to you going, I wish everyone could hear that, you know, like everyone needs to hear that, whether you're in a relationship or not. It's such a, such a deep, profound thing to feel and hear through what you're saying. And everyone who's saying the link is not clickable, Instagram never lets the links be clickable. So you have to go and type it in. So lovelifebook.com, uh, write it down, go to it right now, go to it later, come and tell us that you've ordered it. I want to thank you personally for supporting this book, supporting yourself by allowing this work to come into your life. I think what I've found time and time again in my life is that if I see a recurring problem or a recurring pattern, if I don't disrupt that pattern or problem with wisdom, with insight, with knowledge, with learning, with action and application, that problem will persist again and again and again. And it never, ever goes away. And so sometimes we wish and we wait and we hope that something will move on and it it won't. That's not how life works. And so anyone who's been struggling in relationships, struggling in dating, whether you're in one or not, please, 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 lovelifebook.com is the place to go, www.lovelifebook.com. Again, it's how to raise your standards, find your person and live happily no matter what. Uh, Matthew, you are incredible, man. I'm so excited for you. I'm so excited for everyone that this book is going to touch. I can't wait for people reaching out to you next year going, Matthew, I need you to officiate my wedding because we <laughs> found each other through, through love life. Uh, people reaching out to you saying, you know, because of you, I now have hope and I now have faith because I've been able to find that one person. What You've already told us which chapter you really want people to read in the book, wherever they're at. Uh, what do you think is going to what do you think is going to happen? What is, what is your hope for what people are going to feel when they're reading this book and after they read this book? What, what's your hope and wish for people? What's your intention? Um, I want, I, that's a really interesting question that no one's asked me yet, Jay. I, you know, on the surface, it would be easy to say that I want everyone who reads this to be able to go out and find their person faster. And this book will absolutely be a co-pilot to anyone who is looking to do that. But deeper than that, I want this book to bring people peace and calm back in this area of their lives. Because anyone right now who is watching this, who is deep there, I know there are people watching us right now who are deeply heartbroken. You're you're probably, if you're deeply heartbroken, if you're in the terrible depths of that, you're probably not thinking, how do I find my person right now? You're probably just in terrible, terrible pain and you want to feel normal again and you want to feel peaceful again and you don't want to be in that pain anymore. For those of you who have come out of a marriage and you're like, I'm trying to rebuild myself again and I'm terrified of being on my own. I'm terrified of what life's going to be like without this person in my life, even if it was a hard marriage, just I'm terrified of being on my own again. And you're looking for to get calm again and to get grounded and to feel happy again after this horrible situation in your life or a messy divorce. For some people, it's that they've been single for a very long time and being lonely over time has become a kind of chronic pain in their life that, that never goes away. And they're like, God, I want to meet someone, but I don't want to feel like I'm wasting my life until I meet someone. I don't want to feel like, you know, these years of my life, I'm losing to anxiety and unhappiness in this area. This 
this book is about getting people the final chapter of this book and i'm don't worry anyone i won't i won't give you a spoiler on this but it's in many ways my favorite chapter of the book which is why i hope people read to the end but the final chapter of the book is called happy enough mm. and it's not called happy it's called happy <laughs> enough it's not called yeah it's not called happily ever after no happy enough because happy enough is a superpower if you can find yourself single today knowing that yes maybe i'd be even happier if i met the love of my life but also knowing that you are happy enough where you are right now happy enough to hold happy enough to be patient happy enough to enjoy the moment, happy enough to say no when you see the wrong behaviors in someone, happy enough to stand up for yourself without worrying that it's going to push someone away, happy enough that even if the right person comes along, you can remain yourself and not become something else to try to attract them because you're afraid that if you lose them, you'll never be okay again. Happy enough is not settling. Happy enough is like this stable ground from which your magic comes out from which you can make an impact from which you can make good decisions so this book when you ask me it may be a long-winded answer but in a i want this book to help every single person find their person but even more than that i want this book i want people to finish this book and close it and go for the first time in a long time i feel truly at peace i feel happy enough i have a completely different relationship with myself and i suddenly feel like i can breathe again and i because i know if people get there they're going to start making really good decisions in their love lives matthew i love that what a beautiful intention and what a beautiful answer and i'm wishing you all the best as your friend i hope that this week this month everything that you're doing with the book goes incredibly well phenomenally well uh, everyone who's been listening or watching, and I'm going to post this afterwards as well, so hopefully you can share it with your friends because I think this conversation with Matthew has been so powerful. I've learned so much, and not even just learned so much, I feel like I've been given so much insight into that nuance that sometimes makes you scared if you don't know it, and then when you know it, you go, okay, well, that makes sense. Like, now I can take the next step. So lovelifebook.com, this is the book to grab by Matthew Hussey, How to Raise Your Standards, Find Your Person, and Live Happily No Matter What. Uh, Matthew, I appreciate you deeply. I'm wishing you all the best. And like I said to everyone, if you've watched this and you're like, oh, my friend needs to hear this, my friend needs this book, I'm going to put this live up on my page so that you can send it to them as well uh, so that they can listen to it and get an insight on what they're going to get inside of Love Life. Uh, Matthew, just confirm for me because I saw some comments. You also read the audio book, correct? Is that also yeah. available? I self-read the audio book, so that's available Perfect. as well. On Amazing. For, for everyone, a uh, little tip. When you go to lovelifebook.com and you order the book, um, wherever you order it from, because you can order it from Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or international retailers as well, um, just take your confirmation number or your receipt number and go back to that website because, A, if you enter your receipt number, there are two really cool uh, bonuses that are only available this week. Uh, oh, wow. One of them is a heartbreak series I did for everyone to get through heartbreak. Uh, it was a six hour long video series. Uh, another one is a, uh, um, a movie that I made of me on tour. So if you've never seen me on tour, it's an hour of me on stage. Those are only available this week. We're also everyone who enters their confirmation gets entered into a giveaway where I'm giving away a place on my retreat this year, a one on one with me, signed books, all sorts of other goodies that you're all uh, eligible for just by registering your purchase. And lastly, when you register your purchase, we're doing an event on May the 4th called Find Your Person, where we're going to take all of the ideas from the book and in a live multi hour virtual event, I'm going to basically show you how to create a roadmap from the book to find your person this year so that you know how to actually take the book and apply it so all of that is free you don't pay for any of it as long as you get a copy of the book you're uh, eligible for all of those things so just when you go to lovelifebook.com you can order it there but also make sure you go back to that page and enter your confirmation number so that you can get all of that stuff as well Amazing. I love it, Matthew. Thank you so much. And I want to give a big thank you to everyone who's been watching my whole community. I'm so grateful that you show up in this way 
uh, for me, for my friends, for the community, and, and ultimately for yourself. And so thank you all so much for all the love that you poured into the comments, all the energy that you brought through. I really, really appreciate you and feel grateful for it. And Matthew, I can't wait to see you when you're back from the tour and can't wait to celebrate and catch up, man, for the amount of lives that you will have changed and people's lives that you will have impacted. So thank you, buddy. And thank you for doing this for me. And so, so grateful, honestly, and all the best for the rest of the week. Jay, I'm, I'm, I love our conversations, man. I love our conversations on camera. I love them off camera. You're one of my favorite people to speak to. So I so appreciate you. And I really appreciate you sharing this with your audience as well. It means the world to me. I'm passionate about this and uh, you're a true friend. Thank you so much for helping. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you. All the best. Lovelifebook.com, everyone. Right. Love you guys. All right. Thanks, Matthew. Bye, everyone. Too, Happy reading, everyone. Love you, brother. <laughs>